Well, once again, I want to welcome you to the unveiling of our 2013 honorees here for the uh, Riverwalks Historical Monument Trail. And uh, I want to thank Steve Anderson for making me a part of this. I was asked to be in charge of the weather, <laughs> so you can thank me for this. But this is great to see young and old, and I mean, we've got the very old, and I saw somebody had a baby in their arms back here. Where is that? Right here. Look at that. That's about as young as you can get and still make it out here. But this is a great occasion, and what a great location for having this ceremony. It's so great to see us honoring our past because so many people aren't even aware of the rich history that we have in this great community. First of all, when I say this great community, we're honoring people who helped bring it to where we are today. And when you talk about a great community, you're talking about a community that, when I, I came here 43 years ago and had to tell people that's Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida, yeah, it's down on the, no, it's not down in Miami, it's on the uh, West Coast. Since then, four Super Bowls later and another one to come very soon. And, and, NCAA Men's Football Championship probably just a couple of years away, and a Republican National Convention, and probably from an international standpoint, the biggest plum of all, Bollywood coming next year, when we're gonna get all kinds of international attention, having beaten out Dubai and London for that honor, and the first time ever in America, uh, this, this place, has become an enormous fixture in Americana, really, today. And we're standing at a place almost approximately where an awful lot of history took place. And I'm sure Rodney Kite Powell can tell you more, but I'm kind of a history buff. The fact that at least three presidents spent time right here. Uh, Zachary Taylor, when he was a general, and. Andrew Jackson, when he was a general, both at Fort Brooke, and of course, Teddy Roosevelt, who went on with the Rough Riders. And I also learned from Fred Hearns that uh, Woodrow Wilson was at our train station campaigning back in 1910. And of course, just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the fact that President John F. Kennedy was here shortly before his demise in Dallas. Uh, but of course, it's routine for presidents to come to town, particularly people when they're campaigning. That happens all the time now. But it's great that you could be here. And all of our dignitaries, we have one of our dignitaries. Oh, there's our dignitary that just arrived. You know, the amazing thing, we're honoring the uh, people again who helped bring us to the community that we are today, that made so many great contributions to our past. And when you look around the crowd, there are people here today that we may be doing this for, not me, <laughs> but our children and grandchildren may be honoring some of the very people who are out here on this porch today, again, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, whenever it may happen. But first of all, I'd like to introduce the guy who has so much immersed himself in this and seeing that the Riverwalk becomes the great success that it has become and we're only getting started. But I'd like to present the, the uh, head of the Friends of the Riverwalk, the president of the Friends, who didn't get a chance to shave this morning, Steve Anderson, the hirsute Steve Anderson here. Thank you, Jack. I'll have you know it's been seven mornings. <laughs> I tell everyone, uh, give me a week in Key West, and this is the way it's going to look when I come back. And thanks to Jack. He's been a great supporter. It's so good to have him on board with us. And today we're celebrating yet another step <clears throat> towards honoring and preserving this, the past of this community. I like the the last six honorees, and like the ones that'll come in the future, <clears throat> the six honorees today truly were inspirations to many people around them. Some of them inspirations to an entire community. And all of them were, in a very real sense, leaders, created a future for themselves, for their families, and for this entire community. 
Jack has introduced some of our honored elected um, people. Uh, Did you get around to that? Okay, Jack, he, um, well, I know I saw Councilman Reddick. Of course, the mayor's here. Um, Bob Enriquez is here. County Commissioner Victor Christ. Dick Greco. Dick Greco. Dick has been with us forever. I'm great. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Dick. <laughs> you already have your statue. Um, you know, and uh, there are, if I missed anyone, I'm sorry, we'll catch you and, uh, and uh, recognize you uh, later. Um, these monuments are important to this community, but we all know that they're especially important to the family, the descendants, and the, um, the former associates of the people that we're honoring. I see so much pride, I see so much emotion welling up in many of you uh, and recognizing that uh, due recognition is being paid to someone you loved and care very much about. I know that some today have traveled across the country. I've heard California, New York, other places, strange places like Tallahassee. Um, but uh, I hope you all please help me welcome the family, the descendants, the as former associates of these honorees. If you would, I'm going to ask the families to stand as I call them and ask you to help me welcome them. The family and friends of Cyril Blythe Andrews. <clears throat> Cody Fowler. Kate Jackson. <clears throat> Peter Oliphant Knight. And C.D. Rogers. D.D. Rogers, I'm sorry, C.D. Rogers. Garfield. We're also here to honor Paulina Pedroso. Unfortunately, um, through all of our searching and efforts, um, we not, we've been unable to identify any um, descendants um, in this area from her, but certainly she is well deserving of this, and we appreciate anyone who's come to uh, honor her. Several people deserve special thanks, and that's kind of my job today, is to thank the people that have made it possible for us to be here. I can't say enough about the tremendous efforts of a young lawyer in town, Eric Nowak, who's helped me uh, do so many things. Um, my assistant, Chris Castellano, a little bit of an indentured servitude on his part, but he's done it, I think, lovingly and, and willfully. Um, my daughter, Sarah, and of course, Lee Hoffman with the city. And I also want to uh, recognize and thank my wife, Erica. Uh, she's finally gotten to the point where she no longer asked me, is that more Riverwalk you're working on tonight? But I truly appreciate all her support and efforts. I'd like to thank Ryan Toth, Gio Ruiz, and the Beck Group. The Beck Group has volunteered thousands of dollars worth of time and materials to provide the solid foundations on which these monuments will be permanently placed. And we really appreciate the Beck Company's um, assistance there. I want to also recognize uh, those members of the Friends of the Riverwalk Board of Directors who are here today and the members of the um, nine-member uh, selection committee that are responsible for determining who gets these awards. They will be introduced later. We're so thankful to have a great group of historians that make these selections. Rick Hamilton and the staff of the Tampa Convention Center. Rick, thank you so much for doing a wonderful job in accommodating us today. Um, it's, it has been perfect. Very special thanks to C.J. Roberts and the Tampa History Center. Um, for their support of this program from the very first day, from the inception. They've been such a help and such a support. All right, so in a few minutes, um, we'll show you this year's six 
honoree monuments, but I want to give you a few notes of interest that, uh, th that I think you would uh, like to know about these. First, the pedestals on which the bus sit are solid granite, each one weighing approximately 2,000 pounds. They're permanent. They're not going anywhere. Um, the bronze bust, uh, well, let me say also about the monuments. They are formed and uh, delivered to us by Mark Noggle and his company. Stuart Mellon, located here in Tampa, been doing a tremendous job. The bronze bust are the incredible artistic work of our artist Steve Dickey, uh, who's here today. And uh, both Mark and Steve, the, the work they've done, the effort they've put in, go far beyond uh, another job. I can tell you that. They have given their hearts and every ounce of energy to this project. And as you will see, it shows itself in the beauty and the permanency of, of uh, these monuments. <clears throat> Each monument represents the actual height of the honoree, and uh, each face on the um, bronze bust is based on portraits, photographs, even etchings, and in, in each instance on the personal observations, comments, memories of family and those who have known or uh, knew of the uh, honorees. And so they're as accurate as can be made uh, in a bronze sculpture. There's a map. Many of you have seen the handouts that we have available today. There's a map attached to those handouts which will show you where each and every one of these monuments, as well as the first six monuments, are placed along the river walk. After today, they will all be transported to those locations and will be there for the public to see. And one final thing I'll mention to you on that, on each, each monument has a brass um, plaque, informational plaque, and on each plaque you'll see a little white applique, that's a QR code applique for those of you who have cell phones, smartphones or whatever, and know how to use a QR code. If you zoom in on that, um, on that QR code applique, that will take you directly to our website and you can read extensively about each honoree and the other honorees. By the way, that's something that no one else has done. We think we were the first in the country to use that application. We've been lucky so far. We've been very fortunate in being able to fund these monuments primarily through private donations. Uh, we're proud to recognize the important contributions of this year's sponsors, people that have paid for these. And I'd like to recognize them now. Bright House Networks, Fowler White and Boggs, The Knight Family, Holland and Knight, Tampa Electric Company, the Andrews Family, Tampa Park, Inc., and Lilly Security Benefit Association. We're especially honored that this project has been recognized by the Hillsborough County uh, Preservation Challenge Grant Committee as a significant project of historical preservation, and they have awarded us um, important matching fund grants which have been very, very helpful to us in raising more private contributions. <clears throat> so we definitely want to thank the county for being a major partner in this. In fact, I specifically want to acknowledge the leadership of um, Commissioner Victor Christ, who's here today. Um, uh, Commissioner Christ sponsored the effort to create that fund and has kept it going each year. Uh, Commissioner Christ, where are you? Victor, thank you so much. And let's hear a round of applause for all of our contributors. You know, Tampa continues to be blessed with great leadership year after year. And with the current mayor in particular, I say this every opportunity I get, we have a motivator and a let's get it done kind of person in that office. It's a great attitude. He's been a great supporter and a great help to everything we've been doing. Mr. Mayor, while you're out there leading a very successful effort to make the river and the river walk the centerpiece of our future, we are really proud and honored to have you here once again to help us create this pathway to our past. So let's welcome Mayor Bob Buckhorn.
Good morning, and uh, to all of you, thank you. You know, it was not that long ago, as a matter of fact, about 14 months ago that uh, I stood and many of us stood on this very deck and told Tampa's story to the entire world. I mean, it was August of last year. It was the Republican National Convention. There were 15,000 members of the media that were here. There was a worldwide audience, and we got to tell Tampa's story. And it wasn't a story of bricks and mortar. It wasn't a story of this amazing scene that you see here right now. It was a story of a community that, through tough times and good times, made itself into someplace special. And when I look at the families that are here today, in all of the shades and ethnicities and genders, orientations, folks who started from nothing and rose to set the table for my generation and for my children's generation. Everything that we see here today, the people that we will honor here today, all contributed greatly in the formation of this community that we now know as one of America's most exciting places. And when we told that story to the world last year, it was the story of the contributions of some of the people that we see here today. Contributions of people who understood that they had a moral obligation to leave this city in better shape than it was given to them. People who struggled. Families who lived through some difficult times, but never stopped persevering in pursuit not just of greatness, but of creating an environment where they could pass that torch to the next generation and the next generation beyond that, many of whom are here today. Everything that we are today is because of the contributions of the people that are here in front of you. They made us who we are. We would not be here without them. We owe them a debt of gratitude. And I know when I get to tell the story of Tampa, to my kids, and hopefully to my grandkids someday, it will be the story of some of the folks that you see here today, folks who made a difference. And ultimately, as parents, as community leaders, isn't that what we're charged with doing? Isn't that what it's all about? Isn't our legacy to leave this city in better shape than it was given to us? Isn't it about passing that torch to the next generation to make sure that they have more opportunities and better opportunities than we had. That's what these busts are about. And so when the world saw Tampa, they didn't see just a river walk. They saw a story of a community and community heroes. And everyone that walks on this river walk, a river walk that will be completed by Thanksgiving of next year, a river walk that's taken six mayors and 40 years to get done, they will not just be walking on the water, they will not just be fishing. They will be reading about and learning about the story of this community and the people that made it special. This is significant because if we don't remember the contributions of those who came before us, shame on us. Shame on us. The good times and the bad times because they made us who we are. We are thankful that they walked amongst us and we will memorialize them now so that those future generations will know of what they gave to us. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being here. And thank you for giving us these six individuals. Thank you, Mayor. That's my uh, co-star on the Mayor's Hour. <laughs> Say what, they never get him hold still long enough to pose for something like this, I'll guarantee you. If they were to offer him the presidency of the United States today, He'd say, forget it. I'd rather be mayor of Tampa. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> hey, they treat you pretty nasty when you're the president. You've been reading papers there. He might pull a Dick Greco and come back again and again. <laughs> but um, really, uh, well, they call him Swagger, you know, out at, uh, that's his handle out at uh, MacDill Air Force Base, Mayor Swagger. At this time, I want to bring a guy who has been part of an effort to preserve our history. And one of the great contributions to downtown was when we got our Tampa History Center a few years ago. And what a blessing that's been. And I hope everybody here has visited at least once. And they continually renew the, uh, 
displays and the things that they have there. And there's so much to see and enjoy. Not to mention a little uh, Columbia restaurant in there too. But at this time I'd like to present Rodney Kite Powell, the guy that keeps it running. Come on down, Rodney. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It is uh, certainly my pleasure to introduce the, uh, the six honorees, but before I do that, I'd like to introduce the, uh, the historic uh, monument panel who helps decide, or actually who does decide, who the honorees are going to be. Uh, most of y'all are here today, so I'd like you all to stand up if you don't mind, and I'll I recognize you. We have Dr. Jack Fernandez. We have uh, Mr. Fred Hearns, E.J. Salcinas, and Doris Weatherford. Uh, and and uh, Manny Leto is here. There he is in the back, fashionably late as usual. And uh, in addition, we have uh, Andy Hughes. I'm not sure if Andy is here. And uh, Robert Kirstein. So that is your committee. And it's a, with a, uh, a certainly a heavy heart that I can't introduce the ninth member of that committee. Um, but I certainly will, will mention him. Uh, Leland Hawes, who uh, you all know passed away earlier this year, uh, was uh, also on our committee, certainly a guiding force, not only of our committee, but in uh, the, the teaching and, and really the, uh, the, the sharing of Tampa history. And uh, he certainly was uh, a mentor to me, and I'm sure a mentor to many others here, and certainly in, in our city and county. And um, I wish Leland was here to see what we've done. He, he, he you know, voted on, on these uh, six as well. And um, sad to, uh, to say he's not with us anymore, but maybe in, uh, in 2028, we'll have a monument for him. So with that, I would like to have uh, the mayor and, uh, and Steve come up as we unveil the uh, class of 2013, our historic monuments. Wait for them to coordinate how they do this. All right, the first one is Cyril C. Blythe Andrews. Born in 1901, Andrews is remembered as a trailblazing newspaper man, businessman, philanthropist, and civic leader. His father founded the Florida Sentinel, which was called the Organ of the Colored People of Florida. Upon the illness of his father, Andrews became editor of the newspaper. He became secretary treasurer of the Central Life Insurance Company, a real estate developer, and led the Grand Assembly of Lily White Security Benefit Association Incorporated. That group grew to, to 20,000 members, built three temples, and created an ambulance service. In 1945, Andrews restarted the Florida Sentinel, which had ceased publication during the Great Depression. He purchased the Tampa Bulletin in 1959 and merged the, new, the two newspapers to form the Florida Sentinel Bulletin. As a publisher, Andrews grew in political influence and his endorsement was coveted by office seekers. A Mason and Elk, he was the first black appointed to the Hillsborough County Civil Service Board. He was also appointed to the Florida State Advisory Committee on Civil Rights by the Civil Rights Commission in 1962, chaired the Negro Advisory Committee, and served on the Mayor's Biracial Committee and the Committee on Human Relations. C. Blythe Andrews. All right, next up is Cody Fowler. Born in Arlington, Tennessee, Cody Fowler moved to Tampa in 1924 to practice law. His mother, Maud Fowler, was one of the founders of Temple Terrace. Cody Fowler drafted the city's charter, served as its first attorney, and served a term as mayor of Temple Terrace. Fowler distinguished himself early in his career by defending African Americans in Tampa's courts and fighting for unpopular but just causes. In 1943, he joined with Morris White to form the Fowler and White firm. In 1950, he was elected president of the American Bar Association. The following year, Tampa's Civitan Club honored him with the prestigious Citizen of the Year Award. In 1959, Fowler was appointed chairman of both Florida's and Tampa's biracial commissions. His leadership, along with African-American leaders such as A. Leon Lowry, helped guide the peaceful integration of Tampa's lunch counters in 1960 and led to greater economic opportunities for blacks. Fowler died at the age of 85, still senior partner of the law firm he co-founded, Cody Fowler.
Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson was born in Tampa to Irish immigrant parents. She founded and led the all-female Tampa Civic Association in 1910. Even lacking the vote, the TCA women advanced their causes through will, determination, and political finesse. They saw their dreams realized in the creation of the city's recreation department, the establishment of the city's first library, and the construction of Tampa's first water sewage system. An astute businesswoman, philanthropist, and environmentalist, Jackson was instrumental in establishing and funding the Academy of the Holy Names, in starting and leading the nation's second Girl Scouts of America troop, and in advocating and contributing to the purchase and preservation of the initial acreage of what became Everglades National Park. A woman of keen intelligence and enormous curiosity, Jackson delved into subjects as diverse as rivers, stoves, bees, and books, and filled notebooks with her ideas. She penned essays in the title of one, If I Can, I Will, epitomizes her legacy. She could and she did. Or in the words of former Tampa Mayor D.B. McKay, she would not be denied. Kate Jackson. Peter Oliphant Knight. <laughs> Peter o. Knight was an influential member of Tampa's business and professional community for over 40 years and helped create and shape many of Tampa's business institutions. He moved to Tampa in 1889 when there were fewer than 1,000 residents and served as a city councilman and as county solicitor. Knight and others organized the Exchange National Bank, the Tampa Gas Company, and the city's electric streetcar and lighting system. He served on the board of the Tribune Publishing Company and was the primary local representative of Boston's Stone and Webster, owner of Tampa Electric Company, and prominent in the development of Davis Islands. He was later instrumental in acquiring land on Davis Islands for a municipal airport, which today bears his name. Knight assisted in the formation of Tampa Electric Company and served as its president. He was also a founding partner in what is today the international law firm of Holland and Knight. Peter O. Knight. Paulina Pedroso. <laughs> Paulina Pedroso was born in and died in Cuba, but she is one of Tampa's most influential black women. Pedroso moved to Tampa in the 1880s where she worked as a cigar maker. Pedroso was also one of the most prominent female leaders of Cuba's 1895 revolution against Spain. Jose Marti, Cuba's equivalent of George Washington, headquartered his activities in Pedroso's boarding house in Tampa. She also led other black Cubans in organizing La Sociedad Libres, or Society for Liberty. The group's primary aim was to raise money to arm rebels against the Spanish government. Working directly with Jose Marti, her efforts helped lead Cuba to victory in 1898. The Pedrosos returned to Cuba in 1910, and the Cuban government honored them by allowing them to live rent-free for the rest of their lives. Pedroso died in 1925 at the age of 80. In 1993, Pedroso was in inducted into the Florida Women's Hall of Fame. Paulina Pedroso. <laughs> Garfield DeVoe Rogers. In 1905, with no money, G.D. Rogers began his trek from Georgia to Central Florida, walking along railroad tracks and, it is said, selling railroad ties to buy food. In Bradenton, he worked as a tailor and dry cleaner and later secured licenses in real estate and mortuary science. He and his wife opened Rogers' funeral home, which buried not only blacks, but paupers of any race. In 1922, Rogers helped create Tampa's Central Industrial Life Insurance Company, an agency that sold policies to blacks. He also opened Rogers Hotel and Rogers Dining Room on Central Avenue, both of which became important meeting places within Tampa's black community. Rogers invested in a beach resort for blacks, established the Negro Business League, and worked, excuse me, and worked to register black voters. Rogers was also a philanthropist. Perhaps his most noteworthy gift was a gift of land for a Tampa park to be used by blacks. Today, that park, which bears his name, is the historical Rogers Park Golf Course. G.D. Rogers. And that is your class of 2013 with historic monuments.
Thank you, Rodney. Nice job, guys. In the back back here. Well, we want to certainly thank the Friends of the Riverwalk for all that they have done here. And we do have press thumb drives and guest packets that can be picked up from uh, Chris Castellano. Uh, Castellano. Where, where's Chris? Ed? He's over here. This is Chris. And he'll give you the thumb drives or any other information, the packets. The 2014 class of honorees are going to be announced in the spring. And we should have spectacular weather like this. And the uh, final monuments will be unveiled next December, a year from now. But we want to invite you all to be back here in the spring. And we'll let you know when it's going to be, of course, and in December as well. Uh, we're going to give you a chance to come up here and take pictures and things like that. The uh, artist, Steve Dickey, is going to be on hand. If you'd like to get your picture taken with him or get um, some information from him, anything of that nature. By the way, I might add, speaking of historic things happening that involve Tampa and St. Petersburg in this case, we're coming up in less than a month on the 100th anniversary of the beginning of commercial flight, which is kind of interesting that it began in a town that has the best airport in America and the sixth best airport in the world. And that's judged by travel experts, not by just myself, or I'd make us number one in the world. Uh, but the uh, Tony Janus flight, of course, is going to be celebrated then. And I hope we certainly do enough to remember Tony Janus at that point. Also, the first night flight took place in Tampa. We are major pioneers in aviation around here in the uh, city of Tampa. But again, uh, enjoy coming up and taking a close look at these monuments, which will soon be out here on the Riverwalk and enjoy the fellowship here with one another. And again, as I said, someday there might be a couple of the people that are watching this ceremony right now that will be monumentalized in, uh, in busts like this because so many of you are such a big part of this community. And as the mayor said, making it a better place for the generations that come after us. Once again, I think we've got enough weather left over. You can enjoy that some more. And I'm proud to have been in charge of that. I want to thank the press that showed up here today. And we'll be able to get the word out to everybody about this new addition, the new additions to our Riverwalk. But again, thank you very much for being here. God bless you all.